At the end of the 1960 season, the Wrights football team carried coach Herman Byers off the field of the Wrights Bowl. Byers' team, the mighty Wrights Panthers, had just completed an undefeated season in another state championship. That season, the Panthers allowed only 15 points all year while scoring a total of 333. It was one of the best teams to ever play in the bowl or the city of Evansville. Throughout the west side, people celebrated the season that most believed could not be topped. After all, the season was the best in Byers' career. But the 1960 championship only foreshadowed an even more memorable season for the Panthers. While that team would never be forgotten, they would be upstaged by the team of 1961 because it was the team of 61 that lived the perfect season. The philosophy of Coach Byers and Horn and so forth, and even probably, uh, it was probably prevalent throughout the adult world really, was that everybody function on a uh, negative motivation because if you did something wrong, there was always a consequence. If you did something right, there wasn't much of a reward. And that's the way Byers was as far as the praise. If he just looked at you with a certain look, you knew that he was happy, you know, and you were proud of yourself. He was uh, very much uh, of a dominating individual. What he said, we attempted to do. Uh, it was just, he's a good coach. He was an excellent man. Coach Byers had a lot to be happy about heading to the 1961 season. With three returning All-Staters and Coach Byers in his 20th season, West Siders expected continued success from the Hilltoppers. The team was led by All-State fullback and linebacker Don Hanson. At quarterback was senior Charlie Orth. Protecting Orth were offensive tackles Tom Reeser and Doug Harp, and center Gary Barker. As the Panthers prepared for the 1961 season, Eastern Germany dominated the news. The East German government had closed the historic Brandenburg Gate between East and West Berlin in the second week of August. Stark construction of the wall divided the city. While many in the nation were focused on developments abroad, sports fans on the west side of Evansville were focused on the upcoming season. The Panthers opened the season at the Bowl against the Crawfordsville Athenians. Unfortunately, the Panthers entered the game with four players sidelined by injury, including starting center Gary Barker. With senior Richard Porky now stepping in as the new center, the team was ready for their first game of the season. Despite injuries, Crawfordsville could not sideline the Panthers' desire to win. Wright scored on the second play of the game when Richard now pulled around the left side and gave Gary Fendrick the block that sprung him for a 68-yard touchdown. The Panthers would go on to score seven more touchdowns, leading to a 53-0 win over the Athenians. So after the game was over, Coach Schaefer said that Wright's coaching staff's in their little coaching room down at the old field house. And he said, all of a sudden, a little knock on the door, and Coach Byers leaned back and opened the door up to Crawfordville coach. And, he, and it wasn't Byers. He, uh, Mr. Byers, sir. He goes, yeah. And he said, uh, you know, on this home and away football game? And he goes, yeah. He said, now we'll be coming to your place next year. And he goes, uh, can you all get another game next year? He said, we're not in your league. The next week, the Panthers had another home game, this time against the Muncie Central Bearcats. That week, the Evansville newspapers reported that Wright's competition was shaping up. With the biggest line in the state that year, averaging 207 pounds a man up front, the carrier stated that Muncie would be a tough test for the Panthers. However, if the Bearcats were meant to be a test, the Panthers aced it. The Panthers started fast, scoring two times in the first quarter and at will thereafter. The Panthers' first score came from Jerry Fendrick, who managed to get around his end and uh, broke free for a score on a 39-yard scamper. The Panthers would go on to score 10 total touchdowns for the game. The defense held Muncie to 15 total yards of offense and two first downs, neither of which occurred until Wrights had put in their reserve players during the last two minutes of play. The game came to a merciful end as Wrights beat the Bearcats 66 to nothing. Muncie, we owned, Muncie Central, we owned them. I believe we could have beat anybody on the planet that particular night. The next week, the Courier took a more conservative approach. They made Wrights a 46-point favorite over modern day. Wrights almost covered the spread as they easily demolished the Wildcats 42 to zero. The only sour note for the Panthers that night was All-State fullback Don Hansen's injury in the first quarter. He did not return. As NASA prepared to launch the Saturn rocket on October 20th, the first of its kind in space, Wrights was being named first in the polls by people from throughout the state. Even with the loss of fullback Don Hansen, who would remain out until the Bloomington game, they were able to keep their momentum going with a 26 to nothing win over the New Albany Bulldogs. The Bulldogs never mounted a scoring threat as the Wrights dominated the game. After their new opening game, the Panthers had two weeks before they faced their next opponent, the Central Bears. As the Panthers prepared to face a longtime rival, 
the nation marveled at Yankee slugger Roger Maris. His 61st home run in the last game of the season broke Babe Ruth's record that had stood for 34 years. With these events in the news, the Panthers were set to take on the 3-1 Central Bears. Wright scored early in the game after a long completion to the four-yard line, then going up 7-0 on the next play. Late in the fourth quarter, the Bears quarterback, Carl Hitt, threw an interception to Panthers' Gary Amon, who returned the pass 21 yards for a touchdown. As the game came to a close, the scoreboard read, Wright's 21, Central, 0. After getting past their first real test of the season, Wrights defeated the Bloomington Purple Panthers the next week with a final score of 46 to nothing. The next real challenge for the Panthers would be a game against the North Huskies at Bossy Field. Early in the week, Norris head coach Morris Riley talked to the newspapers and was quoted as saying, statistics don't mean much. Speaking about the Panthers' stellar offense and stingy defensive numbers. With that in mind, the Panthers team went to Bossy Field highly motivated. The game drew Bossy's largest crowd of the year, as 7,500 people showed up to witness the two teams compete. Wright's offense went up 7-0 in the first half of the game, but it was really their defense that won it. Wright's defense held the Huskies to only 85 total yards for the entire game. North mounted only one scoring threat, as Bob Johan remembers. In the North game, looking at those old films, the ball was tipped at about the five-yard line and went right into the hands of a North player in the end zone, and he dropped it. Once the second half was underway, it was smooth sailing for the Panthers, as Carl Klusmeyer scored two touchdowns and Danny Jones ran back a 43-yard interception to make the final score of the game 26 to nothing. The next game on the schedule for rides was a home contest against Memorial, where a crowd of more than 10,000 people would gather in the bowl. Wrights dominated the Tigers on the defensive end of the ball, holding the Tigers to a total of 40 yards and intercepting passes three different times. The final score was Wrights 33, Memorial nothing. Going into the final game of the season, Wrights was still atop the polls as the number one spot, and for a good reason. The offense had scored an impressive 313 points, but the most impressive statistic was found on the defensive side of the ball. Entering the final game of the season, the Panthers' defense had yet to surrender a point to any of its opponents. As they prepared for the final game of the season against Bossy, Wrights was determined to maintain its perfect record. Going into the game, Wrights had won 19 straight victories over a time span of three seasons. It didn't take long for the Panthers to rack up another win. On the offensive side of the ball, Don Hanson scored on a one-yard run, Gary Fendrick returned a fumble 32 yards for a score, and Carl Klusmeyer had runs of 8 and 14 yards for touchdowns. Bossy was trailing 34-0 as they started to drive from their own 40 and passed their way all the way down to the three-yard line right before halftime. And we're just beating the daylight out of them. So, you know, Coach Byers, uh, he, he allowed some of the, the, reserve, the second string defensive people to come in and uh, they, they throw a pass and get down the four yard line and there's about maybe eight seconds to go they, and they, get, they, they call a timeout. Of course, at this time, Coach Byers puts the var varsity in. Time expired before they had a chance to score and the crowd breathed a sigh of relief going into the second half. Wright's strong-willed defense kept their amazing record intact the second half, making the final score of the game Wright's 55, Bossy 0. At the close of that football season, the state of Indiana had three undefeated teams, Wright, Hammond Morton, and South Bend Washington. Being ranked number one, Wright's offered to play Hammond Morton in a challenge game, but Hammond declined the invitation. Along with the Panther football team that year, Evansville would have two more state championship teams. Bossy won in basketball, and North would win the title in baseball, and Evansville would be crowned the City of Champions. The 1961 Riots football team, led by coach Herman Byers, had accomplished an unbelievable feat. They had faced nine opponents and shut out every one of them. The final statistics for the season were Riots 368, opponents zero. Just like the year before, coach Byers was carried off the field on his players' shoulders. Life unfolded differently for members of the 1961 team. Don Hansen went on to play at the University of Illinois, where he was an All-American, alongside Dick Butkus. Following his time as a fighting Illini, Hansen was drafted by the Vikings in 1966. During his 11-year NFL career, he played for Minnesota, Atlanta, Seattle, and Green Bay. He currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia. After high school, Doug Harp, married Judy Hudson, and worked in Evansville. He joined the U.S. Marine Corps on April 5, 1968. 
Sadly, Private Doug Harp was killed during an ambush in Vietnam. He was 25 years old. Tom Reeser attended the Air Force Academy before returning to the University of Evansville. At U of E, Reeser was active in the ROTC and after graduation became a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. Captain Tom Reeser was killed on July 30, 1972, when the B-52 he was flying crashed during a thunderstorm over Thailand, leaving a wife and two small children. Reeser became the 72nd Evansville resident killed in the Vietnam War. Richard Porky Now went on to play at Western Kentucky University. After graduation, he went into education, returning to Evansville as an elementary school teacher at Baker School in 1971. In 1984, now returned to the Hill and served many years as an assistant rights football coach. After several years as the school's athletic director, he continues to teach at F.J. Wright High School overlooking the west side of Evansville. After high school, Charlie Orth attended school at Vanderbilt College, where he played football as well. During his time playing for Vanderbilt, Orth continued his position at quarterback. While there, he lettered three times for his great football achievements. According to Don Hansen, Charlie was the best player who ever played football with him. Hansen adds Charlie Orth might have gone pro if it were not for his shoulder injury he later received in his college career at Vanderbilt. Orth currently resides in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Coach Herman Byers went on to coach the Panthers for an additional seven seasons, winning 47 more games, as well as three more city and two more SIAC titles. During his career, he compiled an amazing record, 189 victories, 51 losses, 15 ties. His overall winning percentage was 77%. After Byers' retirement, he moved to Christmas Lake Village in Santa Claus, Indiana, until his death on February 22, 1993, at the age of 87. A plaque still hangs in honor of Byers in the Wrights Bowl. He still casts an impressive shadow over Wright's football.